Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create custom events and custom conversions. Now, Facebook doesn't really make it easy for you to learn custom events or custom conversions. So that's why I've decided to record this video. So I'm going to show you exactly how to create them uh, using something like Google Tag Manager. And then once they are created, I'm going to show you exactly where you can go to uh, use them as like an event inside your ad set and then also how to add them to your view so that if ever you say you're optimizing for a lead event or a purchase event, but then you still want to see a record count for that custom event that you just created. I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that, um, because again, Facebook doesn't make it easy for you to. Uh, add that to your view sometimes, especially when you create the custom event, but then you can't find it nowhere in uh, Ads Manager. So um, I've got a lot of experience with Facebook ads, so I'm more than happy to share this with you guys. And um, if you haven't yet, consider subscribing to the channel because we release videos about Facebook ads tracking every week. Um, and if you don't want to subscribe, I would just ask if you can give this video a thumbs up if you do find this video valuable, because what that will do is it's actually going to allow other people just like you find this video on YouTube. That's just how the uh, YouTube algorithm works. But with that being said, let's get into this week's content. I first want to talk about what's the difference between a standard event, a custom event and a custom conversion. And I get that a lot of confusion happens between what's the difference between a custom event and a custom conversion. And I'll definitely cover that and I'll even show you how to create them. But first, I just want to talk about like what is a standard event, because um, that's really the foundation. So a standard event is basically just a list of events that Facebook decided, hey, most people, most of the customers, that's just what they probably want to track on our website. You know, so they had a few meetings and they're like, what are some event names that most of our customers would want to track on a website. And then they just came up with a list of different event names. And then they each event name, they actually assign a description to all these events. And that's actually right here. So uh, that link, by the way, uh, is going to be in the description of this video of this article. So let's actually just go through it real quick. So you know what are all the different standard events. So we have add payment info, add to cart, add to wish list, complete restoration, contact, customized product donate, find location, initiate checkout, lead, purchase, schedule, search, start trial, submit application, subscribe, and then view content. And this also includes like a page of event. Okay, so that is a standard list. So if everyone want to track something standard, like some, let's say you have a service based company and you have a lead form on your website. Um, and when someone submits a form, you just want to send a lead event. Where's my lead event right here to Facebook? Well, perfect. There's a standard event that you can use. Just use a standard event and don't overcomplicate things. But where you need custom events is when, let's say you have, again, that same form on your website and that's, let's say they're requesting a quote, right? So it's generated lead. And for you, a lead means that someone is requesting a quote, but then you also have, let's say webinars. Well, you wouldn't want to use that same web event, which is a lead for both when they're receiving the free quote and when they're signing up for the webinar, because when you're looking at ads manager and you, let's say your cost per lead is $30. Well, are you generating webinar signups or are you generating free quote signups? And that's where using the same standard event could actually cause a lot of issues. And that's why Facebook just decided, hey, let's actually give them the option to create custom event. And then a custom event is the same thing as a standard event is just you assign the event name. So the event name could literally be banana. It could be anything that you want. And let's actually use the webinar example. Like I could just create a, a custom event called webinar. And by the way, guys, it doesn't need to be called what exactly it is. Like it could be called, I don't know, webinar for pilots, webinar for realtors. Um, it could be called banana. Uh, and really, I know that the custom event name banana means that they've signed up for the webinar, right? Obviously, you want to give it a good label just so you can easily recognize it. But the custom event honestly can be called whatever you want. It's not like a standard event where ideally the standard event matches what the event description is, right? So here under for each standard event that gives a description. So for example, a contact, usually I wouldn't use a contact event if they are submitting like a, a form or if they're downloading an ebook, let's say I wouldn't actually use a contact event. I would instead use the lead event because the lead, the description of the lead event matches a bit more what they're doing on the website. But for custom event, there's no description. So it could literally mean anything, right? So that is the difference between a standard event and in a custom event. Now let's talk a little bit more about custom conversions. So custom conversions um, is honestly very similar to custom event, but I personally don't like to use custom conversions too much. I usually just will use the standard event or the custom event. And then if I want to get a little bit more data and get really into the nitty gritty, then I'll actually use like a third party software to like look at that data. But I'll still explain to you what a custom conversion is just so you can understand it. But 
basically the way that it works and i'm actually just going to show you how to create it because it might be easier for you to understand um, if i just show you how to create it right now i'm inside events manager and you can go there by clicking the happy menu and then it's clicking on events manager right here and uh, then click on custom conversion and then you'll see this button here so first you want to give it a name you can give it a description the data source that would be your facebook pixel the action source because here we're talking about web tracking it would be website and then this is where you could actually either create the custom conversion based on everyone that navigates to a specific URL, or you could actually use a standard or custom event. Now, this is a brand new pixel, so unfortunately you don't see it here, but if you set up your tracking and then just you know give it a day or two, you should actually start seeing the events that you're sending to Facebook right here or to that Facebook pixel. And you could actually use, let's, let's pretend that this is actually a purchase event. You could actually click on that and you could segment that audience in different buckets. So that's what a custom conversion is. It allows you to create a conversion based on page URL or by based on using your standard event or a custom event. And then the great thing with that is you can actually create buckets. So when you go inside Ads Manager, you can add that custom conversions. And let's say you have an e-com store and you wanna see exactly how many people are purchasing your shoes versus purchasing your t-shirts. Well, you still, your Shopify store or whatever you're using, you'd still want to send that purchase event to Facebook, but then you could come here and create custom conversions for all your suits or sorry, or for all your t-shirts or for all your shoes. And uh, then you would be able to see how many people are buying uh, the shoes versus the t-shirt, right? In ads manager. So that's what a custom conversion is. But then the difference between custom conversion and custom audience is one of the main ones is let's say you want to do like a retargeting audience or you want to create like a custom audience. You cannot create a custom audience with the custom conversion. So that's why I personally don't use custom conversion too much. I just prefer to use custom event. And if I want to know exactly what they're buying, let's grab that e-commerce example. Um, I'm just going to look inside something like Triple Well or like another reporting software, and I'll be able to see exactly what's going on. But they are still useful. And to be honest, they are also a little bit easier to create compared to custom events. Um, I mean, if, if you've played with Google Tag Manager, honestly, it's, it's pretty easy to create custom events. But for someone that doesn't have any experience with Google Tag Manager, then creating a custom conversion and then potentially using that to optimize your ads uh, with that custom conversion, it might be a little bit easier to set it up because inside an ad set, right? That's usually where you select your event goal. You can select a standard event as your goal. You can select a custom event as your goal, or you can actually select a custom conversion as your goal, right? So you have those three different options. So whatever segment that let's say I decide to create here, I could actually make Facebook optimize my ads based on that event because I want to get more of that. Okay. So hopefully this clears things up. Um, so this is the difference between a standard event, a custom event and a custom conversion. But again, if you want my opinion, I personally am just a big fan of custom event and uh, standard event and custom conversion is not something that I use too often, but at least now you know how to create them. And now I'll actually show you how to create custom event. So in order to create custom event, there's actually a few different ways. I like to use Google Tag Manager. So Google Tag Manager makes it so simple for you to create a custom event, standard event, honestly, anything tracking related, uh, Google Tag Manager is a, is a game changer. And if you're not familiar with this tool, um, I recommend that you watch some of the other videos that I make on this channel showing you exactly how to use it. And I'm actually planning on releasing a lot more videos showing exactly like all the different like little features of Google Tag Manager because it honestly is a game changer. It's an amazing tool, but you can actually go to template and you can click on search gallery and then I can click on the icon right here. And then if I literally just type Facebook, like I'm saying, there's a bunch of templates here and I would want to uh, select this one here, Facebook pixel. And then I can add that to my workspace, click on add. And then it's actually going to be right here. And then I can now click the tag and select the Facebook pixel. So now all I have to do is put in my Facebook pixel ID. So I would go to events manager and then click on data sources right here. And then let's say that's my data set ID, AKA my pixel ID. I would come here, copy that, paste that right here. So now by default, the uh, standard event name has been enabled. And then if I click here, we can actually see all the different standard events that I covered, you know, early in this video. So if I want to send a lead event, then I can just click the lead event and that's it, right? 
Now, if I want to send a custom event, it's as simple as you're clicking the custom event right here. And now I can literally call this whatever I want, right? I could call this banana if I wanted to. Um, let's just say we're going to call this webinar. All right. So that would be the custom event. And now that's it. That would be the tag. And when this fires automatically, it would send a custom event called um, webinar to my Facebook pixel and we can actually preview it in real time just so you see it but uh, let's actually continue here and I just want to talk about the trigger what correct most likely if you're familiar with Google Tag Manager you already know that you'll need to assign a trigger to all your tags that's very very important if not you know nothing is gonna nothing is gonna happen so for something like this I mean we could use something a bit more advanced like a data layer event but you could go you could do something as simple as just going to trigger configuration clicking on page view, some page view, and then I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna say page URL. And then basically what I'm saying here is when the page URL contains, let's say, thank you like this. Well, when it, when it contains thank you, that means they've signed up for the webinar and now they're on my thank you page, right? For you, it might be thanks, it might be confirmed, you know, like just use the page URL and you actually don't need to add the old page URL. You can just only add like, I don't know, like the last like word or two words. Like in this example, I'm going to use a like, thank you page URL and we can just say thank you. And then it means that it's a webinar sign up and then I'm going to save this and now perfect. This trigger has been assigned to this tag. And then what I would do here is just name this FB webinar that's it and now if i save this and what happens is when this trigger is true so when someone lands on a page url with where the url contains thank you then it's going to send a custom event to facebook with the event name webinar all right so this is how you would go ahead and make a custom event and like i said you can create as many as you want you can name this whatever you want um, and this is how they're so useful. Like you can create custom events so that you have track more than just lead like because maybe you have like eBooks download, maybe you'll have webinar, maybe you have, you know, free quotes. There's so many different things that you know you can do on your website or things that you want to track and custom events allows you to track as many things as possible. And in, I think last year, they were maybe two years ago now, time flies, they removed the eight events per domain rule. So before you could only track eight events per domain. Now that you actually remove that and you can actually send uh, as many events as you want. So take advantage of it, track whatever you want to track basically and send it to advanced manager. Now, what I'm going to do is I just want to show you how to actually add that to your view inside ads manager, because most of the time, this is where people get stuck. They'll be like, okay, cool. Like I can set it up with Google Tag Manager. I'll just use that template. I just give it a name and I send it. But hey, I'm actually seeing a custom event here under overview, right? But I don't know, it's not appearing in that side as manager. And that's a question that I get all the time. And uh, I'm going to show you a quick workaround. So first of all, you want to go here and you want to click on uh, columns. And if you go here under customize columns, you're going to see that, you know, you have different, I guess, um, tabs your page you have performance engagement conversion and then settings um, here under conversions you're going to see all your different standard event and sometimes if you click on custom event you're actually not going to see anything like you're going to see all again all your standard events here but then under custom events like n actually right here no events available so why is that right so the reason why they're actually not there is because it, you actually haven't used it in a campaign I know it's kind of weird, but in order to start seeing them inside your columns right here, you actually just need to launch a campaign with that custom event. So what you would do is you would go to ad set and let's pretend this is my ad set right here. So I'm going to hit edit again. You select your website and then if you go, you select your pixel and then here under conversion event you would actually select that custom event that you send to events manager. And now when you start sending custom events to events manager, it's possible that it might take a day or maybe two to start showing up here. Okay. So if you just set this up and you published it, right, don't forget if you're using Google tag manager, don't forget to save your changes. So in this case, I would just go here, you know, save, and then you would want to hit the, the submit button right at the top, right. And publish it. And then what I recommend is that like fire that event a few times from your end. So we're going to use that again, that webinar as an example. So I publish, everything's good. Now I'm actually going to go through the process and then fire that webinar event like a few times, just so that events manager like gets that event a few times here. And if you get a lot of traffic, then it should appear in like no time. But if you don't, then that's just a quick way to 
uh, kind of give it a boost so that it starts appearing in Advanced Manager. And then once it starts appearing here, and you can see if it appears, like let's say you go today, you should be able to see it here. Um, and if you don't see it today, then again, the next day, which is tomorrow, go back here and then click on yesterday, which now it should actually appear here, um, your custom event, if you triggered it a few times, okay? Now, once you have that here, you should be able to go back here and you should see the custom event. Let's pretend that the lead event is that webinar custom event, okay? And I would click on it, and then all I have to do is just publish. So I can publish this and spend me just spend like maybe a dollar or i think you might be you just be able to just publish it and then once it's like approved and reviewed just literally turn it off and then once that's done then just go here and then click on customize column and under custom event now you should see the custom event i know it's weird they should just include it there and maybe by the time you watch this video it's just going to be there but i found sometimes that even if it's an events manager it won't actually show up in custom event there you know, under like the, the metrics and sometimes you know you want to optimize for a lead event but then you want to add all these custom events to your view right so you don't you don't always create a custom event to optimize for that event sometimes you just want to see it on you know in your view and see how many of these custom events you generate but it's just weird and it won't allow you to add it to your view sometimes. So that is just a quick workaround to be able to, I guess, unlock it in this uh, metric uh, dashboard here. Um, so just you create a campaign um, or just create a new ad set, optimize for that uh, custom event, just launch a campaign, just going to go through review, maybe just spend one dollar on that campaign and then just like turn it off and then it should now show up here. So it's just a little trick in order to uh, be able to report and actually see that custom event inside ads manager that is it for this video as i mentioned i mean one of the first thing i mentioned in this video doing this is honestly a little bit complicated it is hard and facebook doesn't make it easy like you don't know the amount of hair that i lost just trying to figure all of this out as you can probably see like just figuring out the quick workaround of like oh well launch a campaign with that that custom event so that now it appears like those are just things that I've learned through time and experience. And uh, if you do find this valuable, then I would really appreciate if you can give this video a thumbs up. Like I said, uh, it really helps with the channel and it helps us grow. And when we grow, we can release more videos just like this. Um, and if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel because we release videos about tracking and Facebook ads every week. Now, bye for now.